Do you want to make an accurate three-dimensional model to use in your fabrication design? Well, in this video, I'll show you some of the tools and methods that I use to make measuring simple and easy. It is a good idea before you get started modeling to know how the model is going to be used when you're finished. So, example, if you're making 3D printed parts compared to uh, chopping parts and welding them together, those have different accuracies that they require for the model and for the end use. There's no point in measuring to a thousandth of an inch if I'm going to be manually putting it on a saw and cutting it because I'll never achieve that accuracy with, with the naked eye. So, the three most common tools that I use when I'm measuring parts is the tape measure, calipers, and a combination square. First, tape measure. I hope that you already know how to use a tape measure. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video. I want to get to more of the other kind of tools that I use to make things a little bit more accurate. So the second common tool that I use is calipers. Calipers come in many variations, from manual calipers to dial calipers to even the digital readout calipers. Uh, prices for digital calipers has come down so much over the few, uh, last few years that uh, it makes them extremely affordable to get into. But if you can't uh, afford to buy a new set of calipers, uh, try looking at some yard sales or some uh, used tool places. You can pick up even manual, old manual calipers. So there's nothing wrong with old manual calipers. They might work for you. One thing I wanted to point out really quick on manual calipers is that they are sometimes very difficult to read. So if you're using manual calipers like this, and they've got all these additional lines down here, and those are confusing you, let me show you how you read those really quick. So you take, and first thing you've got to do is count the number of lines that are here. So this is starting with zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight additional lines here. And what you have to do is you go to the other end and you see what the scale is, or it should be written on there somewhere. Each one of these is 1 16th of an inch. So each one of these is 1 16th, and you multiply that times the number of lines that are on this end. And that gives us, on this case, 16 times 8 is 128. So each of these marks, when they line up, is 1 120, 128th of an inch. So, the way you do that is you start, like if we were reading this actual measurement right here, we would go up and start with our zero, and we would see to the first mark, there's two sixteenths there, right? But then what we have to do is keep on going, and we count the numbers from that zero is one, two, three. So there's three one hundred and twenty-eighths plus the two sixteenths. And that's where you get your, you add those together and that gets you your actual measurement. So even plastic calipers that have nothing but uh, graduation mark indicators on them can still be very accurate for measurement. Uh, this set of plastic calipers can measure down to 128th of an inch. And that's roughly 7.8 thousandths, you know, 0 0.0078. Um, of course, digital calipers can go down to, you know, half a thousandths, but I don't know if I'm so sold that they're accurate clear down to that level, depending on the quality that you purchase. A real quick note on digital calipers, make sure that when you turn them on that you zero them out. So, you know, I can take and set this to any place when I turn it on or if I hit zero, it can say that that is zero, right? And so obviously our measurements are not going to be accurate until I push it all the way in, make it flat, make it touch, and then hit my zero, and make sure it's zero, and then everything in relationship to that um, is accurate. So if a thousandth of an inch is still not accurate enough for you, then you're looking at using something like a micrometer. So micrometers can get down to a tenth of a thousandth of an inch, uh, but they're not really commonly used uh, for my purposes. Um, definitely be used if you're a machinist or making very highly accurate parts that are made on a CNC machine. So my third tool that I use a lot is the combination square. Very versatile for measuring all different kinds of aspects of parts. 
So since I go back to designing before there were computers, I have a lot of old drafting tools still laying around. And I find I use them quite a bit to make simple measurements. So one of the old antique tools that I use is the drafting divider. And I still find it very useful for making measurements. Let me show you how I use it. So sometimes parts have very difficult to measure features like this part here has this little rib inside of it. It's very hard to get calipers or anything down inside of there to measure that. And what I find is I can take an, a drafting divider and I can insert it down in and adjust it till it is the right size and then I can remove it and pull it out and measure it on a regular tape measure. Uh, that's the most common use that I use for it. There are a lot of common tools that can be repurposed for measuring as well. Say for instance an open end wrench. Did you know that an open end wrench, if it says the size on it, that is the size that's between the jaws of the opened end? So for example, if we need to measure the diameter of a dowel and we find an open end wrench that fits really good without any extra play, the size of the wrench is the size of the dowel. In this case it's a 7 16 inch wrench. If I take my calipers and set it to fractions and measure that same dowel, we can see it's 7 16 of an inch. Another common tool that I can use uh, is drill bits. The size of drill bits uh, can be used to compare against for the thickness of material. Uh, if it's too thin or too thick, find out until it's nice and flush on the sides and the size of the uh, drill bit is the diameter or the thickness of the material. So for instance this one here, if I needed to find the inside of this hole, uh, finding a drill bit that fits really good and snug in there will tell you the size of the hole. Or if I'm looking at say the inside radius of a feature on a part, um, you know a, a drill bit that fits just into the slot, say in this case, that fits really good and uh, tight, again that's the size of the diameter or the width of that slot. So now for some of the less common tools that can be repurposed for measuring. Um, so pretty common mechanical adjustment tools like feeler gauges can be used to measure the gap between two different materials. Um, these come in both standard and metric uh, sizes so they're easy to use and, and read the thickness that's right on them. Um, and as far as that goes, you can even use like spark plug uh, gapping tools and tell what the thickness of that is. Um, and they come in a wide variety of different uh, uh, styles. You can get them with little pucks that can measure the thickness, so you can slip that in between two different parts. Or they come in round rods like this one here. Um, so each of these, you know, you can use that kind of like you do a drill bit to measure the inside of really small holes or gaps in between different uh, materials. And another one that's a little bit less common, um, you know, these are for cleaning the tips on a gas torch. And, you know, they come in a really wide variety of sizes as well. Uh, so, you know, if you're trying to get really small holes and trying to get a really accurate measurement of what would fit inside the hole uh, to determine what the size of the hole is, um, this is another inexpensive um, tool that you can pick up uh, at any of your welding supply shops. So the next thing we need to do is we kind of need to model the part in our head so that we can plan ahead. Um, and that's a whole lot easier to do once you know how the software works. Um, for Design Spark, for instance, I'm going to look at the part that I'm going to model and I'm going to try to figure out, since Design Spark uses faces and pulls those faces to make the 3D part, I need to kind of look at my part and compare it to what is available in Design Spark so that I can see that, you know, in the case of this PVC collar, um, there's a flat face that I can pull to make a cylinder, uh, and th that's pretty simple to do and uh, convert that into um, the model that I'm going to make in Design Spark. So then I can tell, okay, I need to measure all of the aspects of the plane, the end, the ring inside, the depth, the overall length, to get an idea of how I'm going to model the part. You know, and if I'm going to model something like this collar or this piece of pipe, 
um, you know, it kind of depends on the accuracy that I need, right? Um, if I'm going to be modeling something that fits inside of this, then I need to make sure that our, our measurements are really tight and uh, so that we know that our part will fit. So we'll start with something super, super easy, and that's just a piece of PVC pipe. So if we look at the piece of PVC pipe, we can see that that is real similar to um, a cylinder in Design Spark. So all we need to know is the diameter of the end um, and the diameter of the inside and then the length. Uh, that's easy enough to measure with just our re regular calipers. So it's easy to uh, measure the, the outside diameter, use the inside teeth to uh, measure the inside diameter of the um, pipe and then you know this is short enough I can measure it with the calipers so that's easy enough to measure um, if it's too long then you know obviously we've got to use the right tool and you can even use in this case say we could even use our combination square that's easy enough to use to figure out what our measurement is going to be the next step up is the uh, PVC coupler so this is for modeling purposes, almost identical to measuring and um, uh, modeling the pipe. The only addition is, is that inside it has a little step to keep the pipe from slipping all the way through. Um, so that can make a little bit of a challenge to figure out how we're going to measure how big or how much of a step that is and how deep it is. Um, as far as depth goes, that's easy enough to measure with uh, calipers by using the depth gauge down here on the bottom and we can just measure that right down inside against the edge and to make sure that that is the same on both we can flip it from one side to the other uh, and measure that and that we can compare with the overall length of the pipe as a whole uh, subtract the two sides and then we know the thickness of what's inside and as far as measuring the step inside of how much farther it comes in remember we can take a um, drill bit and get it right angle here we can take a drill bit and slide it down in here and see if it's the same height if it's smooth on the inside in here or not and then we can measure the diameter of the drill bit to see and that gives us our measurement or we can use our um, old antique dividers and we can put it in so that it just barely fits on the inside straight across from one another for the diameter and then we can measure it either against a regular uh, um, ruler or we can take our um, calipers and measure the outside of that as well. So now I'll move on to the next item and that would be the traffic cone. Now this is a lot more challenging item to measure because it's got a lot of rounded surfaces. It's got a chamfer on the inside and a rounded bull nose on the top. Um, so there is all kinds of features and then even on the bottom the the feet protrude from the face inside here um, but they don't it's not flush across the bottom so they stick out a little bit so there is a lot of measurements that a person can take with this I just wanted to show you a few really common ones that uh, a person can use and how to use a, a regular combination square you know if you move it all the way to the end it then can stand straight up so you can use one or even use two of them in combination with one another and this is an easy way to make sure that this one is square and this one's flat off of a surface and you can measure overall height this way or say for instance if I move this just a little bit here um, I can use one combination square this way and I can use the other one squared off of it this way and find where they touch here and here and then I have my distance from one side to the other it's easy to figure out the outer dimension or the outer diameter of that cone say where it starts or lift it up just a little bit to right where the the chamfer stops so I can get my measurements there um, as far as trying to figure out how to measure the radius of an outside corner like this here, we can take our square and put it up against. Um, it's always good to move your square to one of the lines so we can get it right on the one inch mark and lock it down right here. And then when we put it flush up against the side and bring it down to where it just touches, where the 
from this face here when we come across where it touches is exactly what our radius measurement is for the radius of this curve right here. So then of course you know we can we can come along as well and we can measure say the height off of here down to the uh, tabletop you know if we go across and come down on the flat section there and then you know we've got our measurement there as well. And then as far as the inside dimensions, this is probably small enough that I can measure this um, with my digital calipers across. So you know we can get in here and we can get our measurement for um, the measurement across the inside diameter of that. And then same thing, you know, all of the measurements that we're going to be taking here, we can take and measure across, you know, the, the high side of each of these. We can measure the width of each of these. Um, same thing with these feet here. We can do the same measurement of, of, you know, what the width is across that way, what the height is up and down this way, right? We can take all of those measurements. So as far as measuring the height of the feet on this, we can easily use the depth gauge on our calipers, and it's easy enough to put it against and measure the height itself of each of those parts, you know, and we can go around and measure the height of all of the parts as we go around. Um, that's easy enough to do. So each of these feet, notice that they are not square coming out all the way up. They are tapered. So the base of this is a different height than the tip. And, you know, injection molding, that's just so that it will release from the mold. So we got to keep that in mind as we're, uh, if, if it's important that it needs to be that accurate in our model, we need to make sure that we measure that right I'm not going to be using any of these feet I just need to know a general location of where they're at so I'm not worried about the taper effect of that so as far as the top surface goes that's pretty easy to just measure the outside diameter of the uh, cone and we can use the insides and measure the inside diameter as well so that's pretty easy to do so as far as the radius on the outside of this um, you know that can be a little more tricky to do um, so, if we can adjust this to where we can see right where it touches the square, and then we can measure across and get an approximate on how far it is to the outside, if we went square down off of that, then that can give us a real close idea of what the radius of this is. Then as far as the inside radius here is concerned, we can go back to using our drill bit technique. Um, to see, you know, this one's not near big enough. Uh, might be able to take something like the head, of, even the head of a bolt, and see that, oh, that fits in there really nice. So I can measure the, the, um, the diameter of this bolt head, and then divide that by two to get the radius. So there is a modeling technique that I can show you about making a shell, and we're going to look at that method for making this part. So it's important to know the thickness, uh, so we can transfer that into the shell um, feature of Design Spark. So the last part of it is to measure the actual thickness of the material. This is an injection molded part, and so I need to know because this this thickness is probably going to be the same for the edge here all the way through the part clear up to up here, and I can kind of double check that by looking at yeah we are. We are really close to that same uh, thickness clear up here. So I hope that you're starting to get the idea of how to use common measurement tools to take measurements and what measurements are important uh, to turn a real physical product into a model in DesignSpark so that uh, you can interface or make parts that fit or use it. All right. Um, in this case, I'm going to actually model this traffic cone because I'm going to use it to make the tube for a vortex uh, dust separator. Um, I'm going to make the rest of the parts in Design Spark as well. Um, there is going to be a link to the video of that project uh, in the description here if you want to go check that out. And as always, uh, you know, like the video, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you stay up to date with all of my new videos as they come out. Oh, and don't forget, Check out my website. There's a lot of additional information and free download stuff on there um, all about fabrication. And thank you for watching.